I was born in 1931, and I was the youngest of five. Growing up, my dad did relatively well. There wasn't a summer that went by that we didn't have a week or 10 days in some uh, national park somewhere. Life was pretty idyllic. Then, December 7th, the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. My dad gathered all of us in the front room and he said that I don't know what's going to happen to your mother and me, but you are all citizens of the United States. We'll just have to see what's going to unfold. I've only seen my dad cry three times. Once was on the 7th of December because he couldn't understand why the land of his birth was now attacking the land of his heart. The second time I saw him cry was when we were boarding the trains to leave San Jose to go off to camp. And the third time was when my mother uh, passed away. On the 29th of May, 1942, we boarded the train. For me as an 11 year old kid, this was, oh boy, an overnight train ride. Once we got on those trains, there were armed guards uh, at end of each car. I was wearing my Cub Scout uniform and a baseball glove and baseball bat. And when I got on the train, the MPs confiscated the bat. First, we went to what were called assembly centers. And then we were transported to Hart Mountain, Wyoming. My dad really loved the United States. He saw this ad where they were looking for teachers under the Army Specialized Training Programs. My dad applied for one of those jobs, was accepted. He was given permission to go to Chicago, Illinois. After um, VJ Day, he was anxious to get back to California. We boarded the train to go cross country. And the day we got back to San Jose was actually Thanksgiving Day, 1945. It really brought new meaning to Thanksgiving Day. It was tough on our, our parents as they were trying to reestablish their businesses. People were really struggling to get back on their feet. When I graduated from San Jose High School, I applied to Berkeley, got in, and as I always told people, I made the dean's list. But it wasn't that good one that you usually think of. It was the other one. I went down to the ROTC department and got my commission as a second lieutenant on graduation. I was waiting for the troop ship to come in. And every day you had to check uh, the bulletin board. And there was a note there, Lieutenant Manetta, please see a transportation officer. Well, I went to see the transportation officer and he said, we're gonna take you to uh, Japan and be tested for your uh, Japanese capability. I ended up being the detachment commander uh, the military intelligence unit where we did all of the translation and interpreting for the headquarters. It was great duty. In the San Jose area, Mr. Ishimatsu was an immigrant from Japan. He said one of the reasons the Japanese Americans were evacuated and interned was that we really didn't have access to the political leaders of those times. And he said, we ought not to let that happen again. So he'd buy maybe two tickets to the Lincoln Day dinner of the Republicans, two tickets for the Jackson Day dinner of the Democrats. I became the beneficiary of one of those tickets. It became possible that I might be appointed to fill a vacancy on the city council in San Jose. In 1971, I was elected mayor. In 1974, a friend of mine called me up. He said, Charlie Goopser is not going to seek re-election. You've got to run for Congress. 
And this is during the whole uh, Watergate time period. I decided to run. When I got sworn in, the only thing I could think of at the time was, what's a little kid like you from San Jose, California, doing in a place like this? It's just hard to imagine in 1942 uh, being placed on trains under armed guard, transported off to camp, and here uh, some 20-some uh, years later uh, being sworn in as a member of the Congress. To me, there was nothing more rewarding than to be uh, representing a congressional district and uh, being able to uh, relate to people and their concerns. And I didn't want to be in that position of having someone say, well, I wanted to talk to him but didn't have a chance to. And so uh, I always had an accessibility process, but I also felt very strongly about accountability. So I, I really enjoyed my uh, 21 years in the House of Representatives. I did that kind of constituency service as a member of the city council, as mayor, and as a member of Congress. When I was first sworn in as mayor of San Jose, a friend of mine who had been confined to a wheelchair all of his life came to me and asked me if that first week as mayor, if I would stay in a wheelchair as much as possible. I had the wheelchair in the back of the car, take it out, get in, go into with City Hall. I'd fall on my butt, I couldn't get up over the curb couldn't go to the bathroom, couldn't get to the water fountain. When people were talking about putting the Americans with Disabilities Act together, they asked me if I would put together the transportation portion of that bill. To me, it was a great period because it gave me a, an opportunity to work with President George H.W. Bush and with Justin Dart, who was the chair of President Bush's commission for those with uh, disabilities. And to me that was a, a real honor and uh, privilege to, to spend time with all these organizations in uh, putting the ADA together. Senator Inoue, Senator Matsunaga, uh, the late Congressman Bob Matsui and I got together and we were wondering what are we going to do now with this one sentence resolution from the National uh, Japanese American Citizens League? I had a legislative director who had set up the Commission on Wartime Relocation and Internment of Civilians. In 1980, that commission report came out and it said that it was a gross injustice in terms of what happened to the to those of Japanese ancestry and said that it was due to uh, wartime hysteria, historical racial prejudice, and weak political leadership. They concluded that Congress should apologize on behalf of the United States of America and pay redress payments. So we put all of that into legislative language, which was the Civil Liberties Act. President Reagan signed that bill, so it became uh, known as the Civil Liberties Act of 1988. The Intermodal Surface Transportation Efficiency Act. People were trying to get more power to the states and local governments on what kind of highway projects or transit projects uh, would be constructed. I spent a great deal of time putting that together. So it was a monumental piece of legislation. I, I would look at the success of the Congressional Black Caucus or the uh, Hispanic Caucus and think we don't have a caucus 
that looks out after the interests of uh, Asian Pacific Islanders. And so I called on not only Asian Pacific American members of Congress, but more importantly, uh, those congressional districts across the country where you would have a relatively large uh, Asian Pacific American uh, uh, population. I also set up at the same time an organization outside of Congress, today known as the Asian Pacific American Institute for Congressional Studies. I think it has done uh, a lot of good in terms of education and health issues. I think we've made a great deal of an advance in those areas. Under President Clinton, when I was Secretary of Commerce, and under President Bush, when I was Secretary of Transportation, I always looked at it in terms of what we had to do in our departments so that we could answer to the Congress of how we were meeting the goals set by, by Congress. Whether it was as a member of the City Council, Mayor, a member of Congress, or an executive branch, always trying to figure out where is that path that uh, gives you uh, the greater good. So uh, I've always hoped that I could end up uh, with people looking at me in terms of what I've done over the years. I was talking to my dad, and he said, you know, I always wanted all of you children to be active in the community, but I never expected anyone to be in political office. And he said in Japanese, there's an old adage about if you're in politics, you're gonna be like the nail sticking out on a board. He said, you know what happens to that nail? It always gets hammered. I think I encourage people to be uh, like that nail sticking out on the board. <laughs>